Thanks for coming. Um, so we're here for a press conference about the coal slurry injection legislation, um, the Alternative Coal Slurry Disposal Act. And I'm Stephanie Tyree. I work with the Ohio Valley Environmental Coalition. And I'm just going to sort of speed us through uh, and introduce people. So <laughs> she just got done giving an interview, but our first speaker is Lucy Chapin from um, Mingo County, West Virginia. We want the slur to stop. We don't want coal to stop because coal keeps their life on them. I, my daddy was a coal miner. We worked 48 years in the mines. My son's a coal miner, and that, that he, that's how he feeds his family. And, and I understand that, but there's cheaper, you know, it might be a little bit more money that they'll have to pay to get this slur stopped and, and clean it up and not put it into our well waters and to contaminate other people. And it'll save lives because every day or two or every month we'll hear somebody dying. Donald Dillon, y'all may have heard of him. His wife died uh, uh, with liver and kidney uh, uh, cancers and things. And he's had cancer took off of him. And there's uh, other people's dying all the time. There's people that what, didn't even get into uh, the lawsuit against this that's died. They didn't think that it was the water. And uh, that uh, they're passing away all the time. They're, uh, because of this, and it's uh, it's very scary. Because today I might I look like I'm in good health. Tomorrow I may be diagnosed with cancer. Uh, and you know, and you wake up every morning and you think, well, uh, am I going to be all right? My husband's been he's broke out with the uh, sores and he's scarred all over his body, and, and he has Medicare because he had to retire early. And he he was a contractor. He did work around massive mines and preparation plants and stuff. And all the chemicals that were found in my well water, my husband said, Lucy, that's what went through those prep plants because he knew what went those chemicals that went through there. And it, uh, we have iron and arsenic and magnesium and all these, uh, uh, I can't even pronounce the names of uh, the scientists that said and tested our water that's in, in our well water. Now, we, but we have to close them up. We can't never use them. Not even after a hundred years we will not be able to use this water. If I leave this to my grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren, they'll never be able to use well water. I do know that, uh, that we do need to stop the slur because if we don't, there will be other communities. It may be your community. It may be your family. It may be your brothers and sisters. It may be your mothers and fathers that'll be down, that dies. Because I can tell you the funerals that we went through these last seven years that uh, our attorneys probably know the, the exact amount, but I don't know. At, uh, and I pray that nobody else has to go through any of this anymore. A bill that the Sludge Safety Project has been trying to get through the West Virginia State Legislature for years that would, un that would ban underground slurry injections was stripped and gutted by some of the representatives in the House Judiciary Committee. Now, there's still hope for this bill, I hear. I mean, I really hope that the lawmakers that have the power to help this thing pass in the, in the, uh, the way it should, uh, that will ban the underground injections, will we'll do the right thing and do that. I mean, yesterday, during that hearing, uh, Joe Stanley, a retired prep plant worker, said that in the 1980s, when he worked at a prep plant, they used the dry processing uh, system, and they never had to use any kind of slurry. They never had to use an impoundment or underground injection for eight years. Now you tell me why these coal companies nowadays can't do that, you know? I mean, I, uh, like the lady said, I'm not against coal. I mean, my, my granddaddy's an underground miner, and my, my, uh, my dad's a prep plant worker. But I am against uh, mountaintop removal, and I'm against slurry, because they're, they're wrong and they're unnecessary. The Sludge Safety Project has been working for about six years now to get a bill through the West Virginia Legislature that would protect communities and stop the underground injection of coal slurry. Uh, we've worked with a number of legislators on this issue, had a number of champions. One of the legislators who's worked very closely with us on this issue and been very helpful to us over the last couple of years is Acting President Kessler. You know, I was too was disappointed in the action of the House yesterday where the only thing that was left in the bill, as I understand in the Judiciary Bill, was the uh, incentives for the, the industry to, to implement some tax credits and, and employ some tax credits for the employee technologies that are out there that clean the up the slurry, uh, but there's no ban. So we're left at the present time, as you know, with a moratorium, a voluntary where a moratorium is placed by the DEP on any underground injection. But I think the legislature needs to go further and put that as a legislative ban. And the reason I believe that is because, I, you know, I've been 
following some of this over the last few months, working with the, both the industry and you know, some of the environmental community to try to find a solution. But obviously water is the absolute lifeblood of our communities and of our, mirror, of our, of our sole existence, but quite frankly, so it's imperative that we have pure, clean water in our communities. I went over this last weekend with several of my colleagues and visited over in, in Boone County unannounced, no press, no cameras, no anything other than just to see for myself what was going on over there. And we visited Printer and talked to a couple of folks over there. And one of the gentlemen had brain a brain tumor and indicated that, quite frankly, there were seven people in this small little community. Of, you could throw a stone around and, and hit and had brain tumors. And only five of them, or two of them, were still alive and five had died. We then went over to, you know, to another place over in uh, Boone County in Blue Pennant over in Whitesville. We met with some folks uh, over in that area, and uh, they showed me some of the water issues they were seeing, and, and pulled out some buckets of sludge. I mean, really black tar sludge that had come out of there. Spicket when he turned on, originally had the first well employed, and then the other folks I met with a young couple that had some some uh, pictures taken of had a water filter of their well and pulled it out. That usually these filters you put in they last for three months. They showed me what it looked like after three days. One side was nearly brown, and the other was a oily, black, gray substance that clearly to me, clearly to me, was unfit for human consumption. To even bathe in, wash your clothes in, useful at all. Now, I don't know what causes it, and I don't know it, what the scientific solution is, and I don't know what the outcome of the litigation may ultimately be. But the, I'm, the most telling thing to me is when we commissioned the DEP and then the Department of Health over the, the legislature two years ago to do a study and report back to us. The study we got back ultimately at DEP drug its feet, on and on and on. And then they finally come back with a study. And then they ended up saying, well, now we have to defer to the public health department. And the public health did a, a, a study and picked three sites, <coughs> if I recall, but none of them were printer or any of the areas that were affected that led to the resolution in the first place. And then the most telling part of it, even that even the final conclusion itself out of the Department of Health was, it is inconclusive. We don't know. So my position is this. You've got to stop it until you can prove to me it's safe. Mm -hmm. Not keep doing it until I have to prove you it's safe. We have an obligation and a duty as legislators to do the right thing. And the right thing is to preserve and protect the public health. And until you can assure me that it's safe, then it needs to stop. Clear and simple. And that's what we need to do. Now, I don't know if I've got enough votes upstairs to do it. I'm going to try to get them. I'm going to try to make sure that the people that are up there are looking after the residents and the public health of this, of this state and the people that live in our communities. I was very disappointed in the actions of the Judiciary Committee yesterday when they gutted the bill and took out the provisions to continue or, or mandate the moratorium on cold slurry injection. And basically the bill is, is nearly worthless unless we can get it changed in the next committee or if it gets passed and goes over to the Senate to where they can make the adjustments and bring that, that language back into it. And I appreciate everything that you all have done to, to educate me and the other legislators and I hope that we can continue to fight this fight and try to make a difference for these communities because I, I understand when you put coal slurry into these mine pools that may be acidic or alkaline. There are chemical reactions that go on that most people don't understand. And when you dissolve heavy metals underground and they get into the aquifer, it is absolutely going to affect people's health. And all of the conditions that, that the citizens of these communities have can be correlated to these diseases of, of being exposed to heavy metals. I mean. I can't understand why more people can't wrap their heads around the reality of, of this problem. But I, I will commit myself, my time, and try to get more legislators on board with this. And hopefully we can continue this fight. And if we don't win this year, we'll try again next year. I'm on the, uh... Judiciary Committee and I saw most of the yesterday 
and I appreciate the support you gave. And uh, it was extremely disappointing uh, when the delegate of Ireland put in the the killer amendment. And uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, that can be taken out in the Senate. And, and it was very nice to hear the lady start out her talk by saying this this is not an anti-coal route, and it never was intended to be that way. And the fact that she has relatives who work in the mines, and it's not an anti-coal thing. But the, the, the coal people don't, don't seem to be care as much as we do about this, this water problem, and it's disgusting. So I'm supporting you all the way. Thank you all for all your hard work in educating us to this really serious problem. Um, it's hard to understand why health wouldn't be number one. You know, why we wouldn't want to err on the side of making sure people are being poisoned. I mean, that doesn't seem like an unreasonable standard to me. And um, I just want to say that I'm really sorry with the things that all of you have had to put up with in your homes. And I want to say that I um, can't imagine how scared you must be that your kids are going to be affected by something that everybody told you is fine and, you know, that, you know, it's, it's um, and I just want to say that there are lots of people up here who hear you and we need to do our job better so that we can figure out how to get this through. But as Mike said, um, keep up the fight because uh, when you know in your heart you're right, it takes a while to, for people to understand. And I think there were people there last night that were trying to hear both sides. And it's confusing when you have one person who, or one side that is twisting the facts one way and another side um, who, of course, is not. Uh, it, it is confusing, so we just have to continue educating people because I think most legislators, in their heart, they, they don't want to have something very, very dangerous happening to people living in their own homes. So I want to thank all of you for your hard work. And even though it must be, seem very frustrating at this point, um, we get used to that here. <laughs> but um, it is not the time to give up because you know, you've come so far and we just have to keep inching and pushing and um, I think this is a winner and um, you should keep up the good work, thanks.